Hey there, fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and this week we're talking about glazing. Stick around. So glazing is one of those terms in painting that gets thrown around a lot and not very often defined. To put it simply, glazing uses thin translucent layers of paint in order to build up subtle luminosity and complexity in a single painting. You take uh, paint, whether that be thin with a medium or just a naturally more transparent color, build those layers up over the next layer of dried paint for more interesting and complex looks. Glazing is a classic and very traditional technique in painting, but I think in a lot of modern painting, specifically acrylic painting, it's very often overlooked. A lot of what is done in watercolors and oils is done naturally just in the use of the paint itself. It's sort of that's how they behave is you glaze with them. But acrylics, because a lot of the colors are way more opaque, getting acrylics to glaze can be a little trickier, and it's something, again, that people don't really think about. So for today, I actually wanted to demo uh, a type of painting that, um, again, I, I see a lot less common uh, with acrylics than I do with, say, oil painting, or a lot of digital artists do this as well, where you take a grayscale painting and then glaze color on top of it to then obviously add your color. I started out today by making this quick little uh, grayscale piece, which uh, I'm going to be taking varying acrylic colors and building that color up just through glazing. All of the main base shapes are there, but all of the detailing and color is gonna come afterward. This particular type of painting is actually really good for practice of art for artists of any level. I've actually done this style of painting previously, but not very often. Uh, one most notably was a big long panoramic uh, piece I did for my grandmother a couple of years ago as well as a uh, pet portrait I'd made for my mom, although the pet portrait was a, an acrylic base with an oil glaze overlay, but it's the exact same idea. Also, I'm not sure if this particular style of painting has a, sp a name specific to it. Uh, I was kind of browsing around online, I couldn't find a, a specific term for this, but again, we're just glazing color over a grayscale painting, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so for today's demo, uh, as I just mentioned, I already have this little grayscale piece I just painted in the past, you know, 10, 15 minutes here. Uh, pretty basic stuff, standard fare for a lot of, uh, at least textural techniques for a lot of my regular uh, acrylic paintings. Uh, this is was a stretched canvas, which I've unstretched. It was a part of a whole different project that I didn't end up finishing. Uh, stapled that down to this piece of plywood, uh, which should act as a nice canvas board. Standard glass palette off to the side as usual. I've got a, a couple of small flat brushes here to work with my color. Paper towel up top, water off to the side. And for the colors on my palette that aren't specifically transparent, I have uh, some uh, satin glazing liquid. You don't necessarily have to use glazing liquid. You can use a fluid, any fluid extender uh, for acrylics. This is, happens to be a little glossy. This happens to be a little bit more matte. So this is kind of what I'm going with just for the help uh, avoid too much reflectivity for the uh, camera itself. Now once again, I do want to make note that doing a grayscale painting of any kind is a fantastic practice technique because it really teaches you to find the values in the piece without having to worry about the color. Uh, whether you're going to be glazing color on top of that later or not, I definitely recommend doing a grayscale painting at least once or twice a year to keep yourself uh, fresh and Keep your uh, skills sharp, especially when it comes to finding value, especially in something like a landscape or a portrait. So I'm going to start things out. Uh, the color I grabbed for my sky is actually uh, his in its more traditional historic uh, formula. Smalt, uh, smalt is a great sort of, not quite a bright blue, I'd say like an off blue. The one Golden makes is a uh, mixed pigment color, but it is relatively transparent and it's a really great starter especially for something that is already uh, transparent. Um, this is actually my secret color for painting shadows in some of my uh, more elaborate paintings, but uh, because we're just looking for a transparent color to start, that's what I'm gonna start uh, by going with. So because, again, this color is already transparent, I'm just gonna thin with water to start here. This is just gonna pick up on all of the any underlying texture it'll pick up on, but you know, as we work our way down the page, or the canvas in this case, um, 
The value shows through, but we're just adding the color to that. So you want to get a slightly softer bristled brush here. And blend that out. Just smooth it. I don't I don't want I don't want heavy heavy brush work in the sky to that degree. You know, a little thinner, kind of treating them like watercolors a little bit right now. Could even uh, do that once or twice. And as long as you're working with those transparent layers, you can build a little bit more color up and a little bit more color up as things dry. So I think I do want a little bit of this glazing liquid to start now. Just pull that in here a bit. Keep the paint moving. What is nice about glazing liquid as a whole is it has a slight, uh, it slightly extends your drying time uh, for acrylics, not a ton, but enough that it is uh, a little bit noticeable as you kind of start working. All right, that looks pretty good. Can actually probably afford to pull some of that away, even uh, maybe use my rag as a subtractive method for the idea of some clouds or something. We can always mess with coming in later on. That looks all right. Okay, so I have some background mountains. I think I'm gonna lean towards a violet color. <clears throat> Picked up some Diox purple for the first time on my acrylic palette um, quite recently. I don't want it to be that vibrant though, so I'll grab a yellow. This is some nickel azo yellow. It's also an, it's another transparent yellow in acrylic. As time has gone on in my painting process, I've actually added more and more transparent acrylic colors uh, versus a lot more of the more opaque ones. Something like you know you think like a. Uh, CAD red or CAD yellow uh, mediums are very, very opaque uh, paints. But I'd say I, I kind of, I'm somewhere between like a 60-20, so like 60% of my paints are, are probably more opaque. We're about 60-20, um, 60-40, excuse me. 60% um, being more opaque and then the remaining being more um, transparent. And as a result, it, it allows me to really work more dynamically between, you know, those, those darks and, and, and lights in that sense and do more glazing without having to worry about grabbing glazing medium. I can just grab the more transparent color. <clears throat> Another great thing about glazing over top, okay, we're actually very, very... <laughs> The, the diox is a lot more uh, a lot more opaque. I don't need more glazing liquid. I just need to grab some here. Um, it's really kind of easy to overdo it, um, and it's you know you're not going to get that super thick super thick brush strokes as you would with um, perhaps a thicker and and more opaque paint, but this is a really fun way to, again, build up those, those more subtle areas of color. And this is also can be a very cost-effective way to use color as well. If you're concerned about buying, you know, all these expensive colors and this and with how expensive paint is, just buy a larger volume of black and white, do a grayscale underpainting, and get little tiny bits of your colors. Like for example, you can just get like a little one ouncer of like the Golden High Flow, mix those in very small quantities and then you know, using the glazing liquid uh, will allow you to extend that color beyond the point where you might otherwise uh, be able to, to uh, utilize a, a thicker application of paint. So in, so in this case, we're, we're thinning everything out. 
um, not using very much paint at all, and then as a result, saving money. <laughs> Plus it creates a, again, rather interesting look to the whole piece. All right, I'm gonna thin this just a bit more with water now. I wanna get more of this brown down in the, the base here just to help my eye out a little bit in terms of where I'm gonna want my other color. And as you work, you can start to make it a little bit more opaque and a little bit more opaque or just continue doing more glazes um, to then start uh, you know, adjusting values and adding, adding extra color. And really kind of let yourself uh, be a little bit more free in that sense. And as you do all of this, uh, obviously it's not the best idea to detail everything in grayscale because some of that, again, will be covered up with your color, but being able to just block out all of those main areas first, like let, let's, just, let's just block out the shapes. And block out the shapes, block out the values, not like a nice big brush. I, I did the grayscale uh, part of this piece with uh, this exact brush, so it's a slightly wider than the, you know, a little bit smaller one, but uh, that, that I'm gonna be grabbing here in a minute. Um, but it's really, really nice to just block that, those areas out and then worry about color, like split, split up that process so you're actually able to uh, think about them and, and when you can break them down like that, it helps uh, to be able to free, free your mind up in that sense. Okay. That's a pretty good start. I'll go ahead and just trace over my other structures here in that gray. Give a little bit of base to this tree on the right. Not a ton, just enough to cover the vast majority of it. Okay, I'm gonna give this a couple minutes here to dry and then we'll start on the next layer. Okay, mountain in the back still a little bit wet, but we're not really touching that right now. To my palette, I've added some sap green hue, which is a semi-opaque, a little uh, cadmium red, cadmium red, it's, it's yellow, look at it, Ben. Cadmium yellow medium, which is very opaque, and uh, some alizarin crimson hue, which I think is sort of like the sap green, but maybe leaning a little more transparent. I'll still be grabbing the medium for sure. So I'm gonna start mixing in, I have some trees in the back here. Let's go with green, a little bit of blue. This, the smalt is also very low tinting, so I gotta be careful with the not over grabbing too much or too little here. I'm just gonna dab on that a little bit. All right, that's passable. I'll come in and obviously won't glaze absolutely everything. I will have to come in with some opaque paint, especially towards the end, but should help considerably. Get a little more in here for this baseland. Building up that color, little bits at a time. Rather than just slapping a bunch of paint on it all at once. The yellow obviously being a little bit, a lot a bit more um, opaque. Would have to probably get a little, little more liquid in it. And as you get, you know, further and further up towards your upper layers, you can then start making them, you know, more opaque at your leisure. I'm not gonna thin this one quite as much. So I kind of just start to weave some of that color in. And, and because this is still wet, just weaving a little color in as I go. I'm not completely disturbing the transparency of it, but I'm not afraid to add a little extra to start bringing some light in. I could have started lighter and went darker, you know, vice versa. That's what's nice about acrylics is you don't have to work uh, light to dark or dark to light, you can do either. Use gray. 
Maybe I'll keep a little bit more of the reds in them. Or even some of that violet would be good. Use, use a little more sparingly, of course, since everything's really yellow. You know, having, having something to kind of offset that, the rest of that color more. And wherever those shapes were, I can't remember at this point. At least for that one in the back. And in, again, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this already or not, but in my in my regular acrylic work, not uh, you know a little demo like this, I employ both glazes and opaque colors. Uh, just depends on the, the the need of the piece, really. It is also supposed to be one somewhere over here, behind this tree. Should be able to see at least some of it. And controlling that, again, the difference between the the really transparent glazes, like what we started with in the sky, and then slowly building up more opacity, will really allow you to do uh, a lot more complex things with your work. A bit more of that blue, so you can kind of see that, more of that technique that I use in my painting more regularly. When this blue dries, it, it really color shifts down, and because it's so transparent, a lot of the underlying colors will come up a little bit more, too. I've been uh, meaning to make a video about my, my painting secret weapons. Haven't, uh, haven't quite gotten there yet. I, like, I would like to get up to five at some point so I can make a five things video, but I haven't. I think I've got like three <laughs> on my list. So when, when I think about my other secret weapons and what I actually utilize more regularly, I'll, uh, I'll make that video for you guys. All right, I do need to start bringing some lights in here. This is a lot of mid-tones uh, so far. I, d I didn't really push the extremes of my light and lights and darks in the grayscale painting, as you guys saw uh, at first. I'm gonna have a little zinc white, I think. Zinc white's another great transparent uh, acrylic color. Some companies will actually call this uh, transparent mixing white. And obviously with glazes of any kind, the l if you're looking for that super bright highlight, you're not going to get it, because it's a glaze. Um, another great use of glazes is to do more uh, like mist and fog and stuff like that. Actually, I actually have an entire video on uh, mist and fog where I use uh, both spray paint as well as the zinc white to create something a little bit more natural looking. Yeah, allowing myself to be a little more opaque now. Something like that. And there we have a glazed over uh, little landscape. Now I have not 100% with all of my colors here. We're, we're still leaning very yellow in the grand scheme of things. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Uh, come back in a little bit and throw the next part of this process just in a time lapse. I'm gonna come in probably with this brush as well as my liner and just polish this out a little bit more, not being afraid to grab a little more opaque color and uh, layering that on top of this. But as far as the glazing goes, this is a really great way to kind of get started on that piece and, and bring your life and your color up. And once you're to a point like this, granted, yes, you could keep glazing on it continuously. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab some of my uh, more opaque colors and uh, really give this stuff, give, give this piece a little bit of extra polish here.
So that's it. Here we have our quick little demo uh, landscape utilizing acrylic glazing. Once again, this grayscale to color idea is super, super fun. And if you guys are unfamiliar with it, I really hope that this video has encouraged you to give it a try because it's, I, th I think in the grand scheme of painting, it's one of those techniques that if you're not familiar with, you might be like, I didn't even know you could paint that way. Yeah, you can. Whether you're doing it to expand your skill set or just uh, be a more budget conscious artist and exactly how much paint you're using, glazing is a great technique to utilize, whether that be uh, acrylic painting, oils, watercolors, whatever. So I'm rather curious how many of you out there have heard of this technique, tried it for yourself, or maybe actually utilize it on a more regular basis. Or if this was entirely new to you, or you just like watching me paint, go ahead and hit that like button, get subscribed if you're not already, check me out on socials in the description box below, including the community discord, sign up for the newsletter on my website, and this has been from Cinderblock Studios, keep on creating and I will see you guys next time. There's chairs over here, I didn't realize those were going to be in the shot until I moved the camera.